Hello and welcome to Women Today. I'm your host, Selena Ashra, and today our topic is media and arts. We've got some amazing guests on the show, so stay tuned. You can get in touch with us via Facebook and Twitter, and you can also pose your questions to our guests. So the Facebook is at Women Today Talk, and you can tweet us at Women Today Talk too. You can also call us on 0203-637-6849. So, without further ado, I want to introduce my guest. Hello. Hi. So, your name is Amanda Hart. Yes. And can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, well, I'm uh, author of The Guys Upstairs. I'm an intuitive consultant and I help people to find their best self, which is their creative aspect. That's really interesting. Yeah. And Minal Patel, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I run a company called Red Tower. Uh, it's a youth talent and business development organisation. Uh, we work with the creative sector, so whether that's individuals or businesses. Uh, it's more like project management consultancy, as well as deliver workshops to young people in the field. Wow, that's like, I really love the idea of like, you know, um, inspiring young people and, you know, helping them to achieve their dreams. That's, that's really interesting. So um, what, do you, what does art mean to you? Arts is a way for all people to sort of release their sort of creativity through various forms. Uh, it's important for me because I've always been creative myself since a young age. And it's one of the best ways to get creative and let off a lot of stress. <laughs> And how about you, Amanda? Yeah, I think I think I'd, I learned about creativity later on, even though I was very creative as a child. I think I suppressed a lot of it, um, and I found it's the most um, I think it's the most important tool that we can have to help us to become our best self, to become aligned. So that's something that I promote and um, encourage in my clients. Oh, okay, that's something that is really really interesting. Can you tell me a little bit about? Your, your work? Yeah, I, well, I, I fell into it really. Um, I had come from a very troubled upbringing, um, so much so that it had created very negative programmings. And even though I went out into adulthood thinking I was free and I was going to be able to create uh, my destiny, um, I fell into one critical situation after another. And it was really when it came to the last port of call that I felt that I had to find what it was that was uh, was going on and I had to take responsibility for that. So I discovered about the power of, of my mind and how I could overcome those programs and that's what I then started helping others to do. So the creative aspect mm. is very much part of the alignment um, as human beings. We need to, to feel grounded in this world to find our true path and that's what I help with. Wow, that's I really like the fact that you know you try and help people and like Minal, you do what 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 kind of things do you do? So Red Tower, uh, we project manage, we do events management, we do consultancy. Um, the last project I did was uh, with some of my clients, uh, Rampage Sound at uh, Carnival, London Notting Hill Carnival. Wow. Uh, we event managed the their sort of uh, stage area and their sound system for the weekend. Um, it, we also see ourselves as um, advocates between uh, the community and um, sort of authorities such as government and uh, metropolitan police, etc. Um, it's quite a de delicate thing to do. We want to support creatives because they're good at what they do, so that whether they're a DJ or an artist or a presenter, um, but we think that their development needs a bit more support and could be, you know, their back office could be a bit more sort of structured. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to go to our boxes. So we asked the public, uh, we basically asked them, what does art mean to you? And so we're going to show our Vox Pop now. It's quite subjective. So I might find that I'll walk down the street and I'll see something that's graffiti on the side of the road that I think is beautiful. And that to me might be art in the same way that I might go to the National Gallery and see uh, Peter Paul Rubens uh, masterpiece and think that's art as well. Wow, art is really important. It's, um, it's a form of expression of freedom, uh, be it visual or even spiritual. I'm not like a massive like arty person I suppose but um, I mean fashion mainly for me because I studied it at uni. Um, it's my, 
my job is centered around it. So I suppose art, like fashion to me is like a way of representing yourself through color and through like, and through like your own style. Art means everything to me because I think jewelry is part of um, art. So um, I got loads of inspiration from art and history and traditions from different cultures as well. When the people looking for the art is like the same, like they can feel what the, the artists want to say. Yeah, I think it's, um... it's... It's interesting how people can either be encouraged to find their creative uh, flair in life um, or they discover it by uh, their way of salvation, really. So I think in, in many of my client situations, I think a lot of people discover that their, their, their art or creativity is their salvation. Um, so I think, yeah, it's interesting actually hearing all the different views of, of what art is all about. And Minal, what do you think? I think, you know what, everyone's got a creative element. Um, if you look at children and kids, they're always doing something out there, whether they're playing with mud or whether they're just painting or they're scribbling on the walls. Um, I think as we grow up, we sort of lose that creativeness. And from, for me personally, I think I've rediscovered it in the last few years. Um, so yeah, I think what they're saying is right. Everyone's got their own sort of outlook on art and they use it different ways. Mm, definitely. I mean, for me, art is all about, you know, um, expressing yourself like how, you know, people were saying in the, in the, in the video. Um, I think it's really important, however way you want to express, express yourself, it's just really important to have that, that kind of, you know, that kind of, um, you know, that kind of uh, outlet that, mm. that you can, you know, express yourself with. So I think that's, that's really interesting what you both, what mm. you were both talking about. Um, so can you tell me a little bit more about your book? Yeah, well, uh, I, I was asked to write the book um, many years ago and I, I really didn't want to, to write it purely because from a personal point of view there was a lot of um, intimate details about my life um, but I realised that that was the only way I was ever going to really make a difference if I, if I gave the backstory, so to speak. And um, for me, uh, I, it was um, through illness, I ended up in hospital and um, with, with nothing else that I could do really, um, it, it just came about. And actually I found it really cathartic. Um, actually using that creativity helped me to heal. Um, and the whole process um, was so inspirational that um, the book took five years to write. But now I've written, well, I'm in the middle of writing another book about the creative process, about how life transforming it was. So I've sort of gone in, in a sort of, you know, into a, in another aspect of it to look at the creative aspect of how that really does turn people around, turn our lives around when we start to, to become our authentic selves. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's quite an experience. <laughs> and how do you, do you think that art is a therapeutic or what do you think, what's your opinion on that? Well, for me, art was... When I was young, I was always, because um, I, I grew up going attending a Saturday school and actually oh, wow. well, uh, I use, managed to use a lot of creativity there. So I was always, at the time, forced to go and do uh, plays in, in my language, <laughs> which is forced. Gujarati. Yeah, when I was young, I was forced to go. You know, I, I, I despised it at the time. Um, but I actually enjoyed the, I, I didn't like the rehearsals, but I enjoyed performing. But everyone else thought it was not cool to, to be on stage and do these things. So, you know, for me, it's, it was kind of suppressed, I think, after I became a teenager. When you're doing GCSEs, it's very much, you know, being an Asian person is get down to your studies. You know, there's <laughs> no do time your for work. this. Do my work. <laughs> but, you know, the A-level, I mean, the GCSE I got in my, my only A was art. Wow. Um, for me, the biggest regret I had, I have, is when I started A level art, and there was there was no guidance for me at the time to take that forward, or what you know, anyone telling me or advising me what careers I could do with an A level art. So I dropped it, and for me, that that is one of my biggest reg regrets in life. Um, but I'm sort of getting being able to work in the creative sector is fulfilling that now. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, do you think that there needs to be more, you know, guidance in schools and, I think you know? So. Yeah, I, I think that um, I, I, I work with children from the age of eight and that's when they're really in their cr creative uh, phase. 
and uh, and I help them to find what we call the genius potential and and you know they'll either become athletes or writers or mathematicians so they all have their own individual creative ability um, I mean I was told you know by my father you know uh, I told him I wanted to be a journalist and he said don't be so ridiculous you won't make any money um, you know <laughs> because he was an entrepreneur he thought it was all about making money so I was quashed and um, like you, I, I, I had GCSE art mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, what am I going to do with this? Because it's the only thing I've got and English. Um, and then I wasn't encouraged any more than that. So I think we are constantly searching for that creative aspect in ourselves. And when we honor that, then we can really find our fulfillment. Wow. So, yeah. That's really inspirational. Well, I think, you, you, you know, sometimes you have to stand up for, for what's right. And in that, then you can stand up for others. And it's sort of a knock-on effect. Then, then other people will inspire others through, through taking that right choice. So, it, uh, it, you know, when you go into alignment with your authentic self, then that has a, a good effect on everybody. Wow. And what do you think, Mina? I think uh, young people and sort of advice and guidance. I was actually a Connections PA many years ago, which is careers guidance for uh, teenagers and um, th they actually, the best way to get that more experience as well as doing the exams is go out and get some experience, go and volunteer in places, go and try the art class, evening classes, explore and speak to people in the industry at present. Um, it's all good. Th there are more careers advisors now compared to when I was at school, <laughs> hence I dropped the A level, but um, it's all good having them. But the best way for young people to find out more is to go and speak to someone who's in the industry at the moment or who are you know go and volunteer somewhere okay and so there was a statistic that just come out and it says that uh more women are into getting into arts than men what do you think of that what do you think about that um I, i'm wondering whether it's because women are more peripheral uh, we're more aware and we use both hemispheres of the brain. I think uh, with, with working with the power of the brain, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I work with this uh, element, when, when we go into our creative phase, we use both the left and right hemisphere. So where is the left and, like, I mean, so the, the, the is, creative... Yeah, um, the creative element is the right hemisphere. Okay, the creative element so, right. But when you, we go into creation, so when you're listening to music, when you're creating art, yeah. you, you, you tend to go into both hemispheres and you go into that lovely creative phase where everything just comes to you and inspires you. And I think because we're multitaskers, we're de made by definition to be multitaskers, <laughs> we're more likely, I suppose, to, to have both hemispheres open because we're on red alert all the time. Mm. Um, so I think it's just the way we're made. So you think women are the better? <laughs> the and better. also, and I think also women are, I think they, they, they're more in inclined to I to think it's therapeutic it. for them. It is. You yeah. know, like drama. Mm. Art painting. You mm. know, I've got my auntie. She's seventy-five now, and she's started painting. I think five, six years ago, wow. and she's fantastic. Wow. She does displays. She she puts mm. them in galleries, and you know, she's she was always creative, but never had the time. So for women, it, I think if if that statistic, do you, do you know the exact statistics or? So it says that. 80% of women are engaged in the arts compared to only 71% of men. Mm. Okay, so for me that's not too much of a large gap, but still more women. Mm. I think men are slowly, you know, they're there, they're in the background doing something technical somewhere, <laughs> in theatre or wherever it is to do with arts. But for women, I definitely think it's therapeutic. Okay, um, how do you think we can get more women involved in the arts? kind of advice would you would you give them? Well, I, I think it's all about confidence, isn't it? I think it, what we've got to do, as I always say, to, if a client comes to me and, and um, they're going through difficulty, what I tend to do is say, well, what was it you enjoyed doing when you were a child? And, uh, and they always look at me as if I'm bonkers. And they say, well, I came here to, to help change my life. And I said, well, first of all, we've got to look at what makes you creative. What, what is it about you that, that brings that passion to life? And what is it that you're suppressing? And so once we sort of start to open that little box, that window, then it starts to help open everything else up. So I think we, if we look back at what we did as children, mm. uh, whether you used to sing a lot, whether you used to dance, whether you used to entertain everybody, you know, whether you did art, whatever it is, 
that tends to give you the clue and then I think really you need to explore you, you've got to get out there you've got to join something that's going to give you that inspiration I think that is something that these days which is um, equally as important as going to the gym and eating mm -hmm. healthily um, it's you know it, it's a it's a muscle you've got to exercise this brain and 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 that's what the creative aspect allows you to do Wow, that's really interesting. And what, is it, what do you think? You know? I think um, something you touched on was the childhood um, sort of look at what you're into when you're a child. And yeah. funny enough, I was clearing out the loft um, at my mum and dad's this weekend <laughs> and I found all these little books I had written. Um, oh. you know, silly things when I was seven. <laughs> One was called Tomato Fever. <laughs> uh, you know, I made a front cover and everything. And oh. I was thinking, why didn't I carry that on, you know? Mm why didn't I carry that on so but it's never too late you know you can start writing whenever so it could be writing your diary and then you sort of expand on that or start blogging that it's so easy it's much more easier to get your writing out there with blogs and things mm. and to get your you may, might have your story you want to tell people um, I think you just women just have to take the plunge and do it yeah, I mean, Absolutely. you've got your, your book as well. Yeah, I'm, I need a kick up the backside, I really <laughs> do, but um, I do. But then I help people to see that actually you've got to take that leap of faith. Uh, so I suppose that's what I advocate. Um, and I think, you know, it, it, confidence um, is the key at to, to deciding whether we do this or not. So I think when you look at it and you think, actually, confidence is not part of who I am. It's, it's you know, it's stopping and suppressing me. So if I put that aside and say okay, talk to myself as if I'm advising my best friend, I think yeah. then we would give ourselves the best advice. Mm, that's, that's some good advice. I think I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I often have to do that myself. <laughs> take the leap of faith. Yeah, yeah. take the leap of Be faith. Be fearless. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's a good point, yeah. yeah. So what do you think of this statistic? So it says that um, arts engagement is significantly less for adults from black and minority ethnic groups rather than, so it says that about in 69.9% 60, of black and ethno, uh, ethnic minority groups are involved in the arts compared to s about 65% of uh, other groups. What do you think of that statistic? I think and why do you think that is? I think from you know, me being Asian, I can say quite frankly, yep, you, know, <laughs> we, we, you know, we're told to, well, we were sort of brought up to follow a certain educational route and into certain careers like legal, medicine, Doctor. all that kind of thing. And, you know, there's me being rebellious. But I think that has some part to play in that statistic. But I think we're coming out of it now and parents are understanding that actually their children, especially my generation, they understand that their children now, they can have a career in the creative sector or the arts. And you know, they can get, still get a good income. You might have to work hard for it because it's very competitive, but they, they can do it. You know, they just, yeah. So that's my view. Okay, and what do you think? Yeah, I, I've seen that with a lot of clients that come to me, and I do think there is a cultural background and it is an upbringing, and, and also um, uh, a religious upbringing as well. It, there are certain, uh, um, you know, sort of codes of conduct that we're taught that we have to follow by and abide by, and, um, and you know, just because uh, we, you know, we want to, you know, to be creative doesn't mean to say we can't be successful. But I think, you know, in general, parents want the very best for us. Mm -hmm. But I also think we have our own voice. And when we understand that we have this power in us to, to forge a, a path with our creative aspects, then we have to, to stand up and uh, make that counted. That's a really good point. I like that. <laughs> stand up and, and make oh, yeah. yourself counted. Yeah. I think one of the points is like it's not parents fault either because they were no. brought up a certain way so it's just a series of how people were brought up in in each de generation and it's slowly changing so yeah. it's not to be disheartened there's still you know if you're an ethnic minority and you want to get into the arts mm. you can do it and there's so many different avenues now you can Absolutely. take tv channels like tv one you've got all these different you know um you know, BBC Asian Network mm -hmm. and all these different, you know, all these different kind of, you know, outlets that people can actually, you know, get out there and Absolutely. experience these things. And I think that... So we've got a caller now. Oh, sorry. 
<laughs> We'd like, hello, hi, what's your name? Hello, Sargon, my name is Assad. Hi, what's your question or comment? Uh, well, I uh, just want to contribute to the, to the discussion, if I may. Okay, hello? hello? Hi, uh, we can hear you. It's really fascinating to hear you talk about women's involvement in the arts. Oh, it's thank uh, you. Well, women have always been involved in the arts. Of course, they have the due recognition, I think, for, for the peers. But uh, one great thing in the, I guess, in the century, the second half of the 20th century, and now into the 21st century, that uh, women are visible. You know, you can't deny them their presence, their, their right to express themselves in the arts. Their names are present. For example, uh, in the time of Michelangelo and Leonardo, women were always present. In fact, the biggest, uh, in the case of Leonardo, his biggest backer was his, was his female companion. Mm -hmm. And of course now we know that she was present and that perhaps she, had, she was a participant in all his great work. Similarly, in our own tradition, in, in sort of Bengali tradition, Muslim uh, and, and Bengali tradition, of course women have been present. I was just thinking, you know, when you were talking about this, artisanship, you know, like uh, embroidery, for example. This was something that was absolutely, how can I put it, it was part of daily, uh, daily life, you know, to make things in the house, furnishing, uh, embroidery, all that shit. And I was talking to Italian friends, and he was saying, actually, this is remarkably similar to their own traditions, that their mothers and grandmothers, uh, you know, you express themselves in those, uh, in those uh, traditions via embroidery, for example. I'm not sure about England so much, but what I'm saying is that, but those arts, of course, were not valued. Now we are beginning to value them. The, the skills involved, the art friendship, the ingenuity involved in all this. And beyond that, of course, in, in, in literature, in music, in fashion, you know, all these areas where actually women were the hidden part are now actually in the forefront. Their names are known not just here in Britain, but also in Bangladesh, amazing how involved women are in design activities, for example, or making plays, or in the theatre, for example. Women are incredibly active in the Bangladesh theatre. Even the rock music scene, for example, in Bangladesh. By the way, the, the rock bands with women. <laughs> so. Oh, wow, that's, that's really amazing. Thank you so much for calling in. I mean, what do you think of... Yeah, actually, I was, I was just thinking about my childhood because both my grandmother and my, my, my nan um, were knitting designers. Um, you know, they... I, wow, I knitting designers. Well, I, I learned to knit and crochet when I was five. And I think back to how... Uh, I can't remember how to crochet, but I can remember to, how to knit. Um, and I made the most amazing creations. And I made all my, my first child's clothes, just not because I needed to, because I wanted to. And there's something so incredible about putting that love and, and detail into something that you're creating from somebody else. And I think, yeah, art is, is like a time capsule that we pass on from generation to generation. If we lose that, mm -hmm. then we've lost yeah, our, our whole identity. Mm. What do you think? Absolutely. Um, funny, my mom used to knit as well, and um, I, I used to mess around with her knitting needles. Um, I didn't finish any garments, but <laughs> <laughs> I found her knitting quite fascinating. My cousin, she used to knit, she, used, she knitted some leg warmers when I was seven for me. I remember red, <laughs> red and white ones. Um, I think th the caller, when he mentioned about, you know, fashion and everything like that, wh when you look at half your garments that you buy here, they are made ab abroad in Asia, you know, yeah. whether it's China, Bangladesh or India or Pakistan. Um, so it's interesting that he, he brought that up, you know, it's something we should be proud of, um, you know, that most of the garments are made abroad. <laughs> um, I think um, talking about tradition, absolutely, we cannot lose, you know, what our traditions are. One, so my background, Gujarati, we have this um, art form called Rangori. Um, which we do over the um, Diwali celebrations, it's like coloured sands and we make all this art with it and Aww. I'm very much into that and <laughs> you know I also volunteer at a Saturday school which I grew up in so now I'm giving back. 
Oh, is, that, is this a Saturday school that you, do, you were forced yeah, to go I'm to? Forced to do, yeah, <laughs> and I was forced to go to, but actually I'm giving, I love it now. And I, I, I want to, you know, I'm giving back because I want to carry on the traditions because, you know, being here, I'm you know what? I really, diluted. I really, really love, like, talking about, like, Gujarati school and everything. But we're going to have to take a break now. That's fine. Um, thank you, and we will be back after this break. Thank you.